This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Hello my goblins and ghouls, my name is Steven, and today we are getting the motherboard and the feeder to kiss. <laughs> no, that's gross. And today we're making the motherboard and the feeder talk. A few episodes ago, we got this motherboard spun up that can talk over RS-45, and we just got this feeder working, which can also talk over RS-45. So we have all the hardware that we need in order to get these two talking to each other, getting the motherboard sending commands to the feeder, getting the feeder saying, hey, something's wrong, back to the motherboard. And now it's just a matter of getting all the, the logic and the communication working. There is one last physical barrier before these two can talk, and that's getting them electrically connected to each other. On the motherboard, we have a JST XH connector. And then on the feeders, we have this spring finger connector, which is pretty much just five unpopulated pads on the PCB itself. So the way we're gonna make them talk to each other is another revision of the feeder floor. The feeder floor is a little piece of hardware that bolts onto the front rail of the index, and it has spring fingers that interface with this, and then connectors that plug back into the motherboard. So this is the old feeder floor. It just has four pins on the spring finger connector and then a connector on the bottom that connects back to what was the piggyback board. This time, however, I'm not milling these out. I got them made from PCBWay. Now this one's a little different for two reasons. One, it needs to have two connectors because all of these are all gonna be daisy chained together. And second, the feeder floor now has two footprints for resistors that will make a voltage divider the feeder will be able to see what the voltage divider is putting out. And then based on that number, it will be able to know what slot it's in. That will allow the motherboard to be able to control the right feeder the right way and all that kind of stuff. They need to know where they are so they know what command to receive from the motherboard. All right, so let's make a bunch of feeder floors, give them their own voltage divider references and slap them onto the index. <laughs> It's a bunch of feeder floors. So all of these are almost done. They have the physical piece that mounts it to the front rail. They have the almost finished soldered feeder floor circuit boards and all the connectors and cable harnesses all wired up. I only have five of them here, but it's enough to get the gist. The last thing that I need to do to these is give them ID resistors. Now, I don't think this is the best solution. Using an analog voltage like this is probably not gonna be incredibly consistent for something like identification. It does break down across 32 feeders to be a little bit over 0.1 volts of a difference. And the ADC on the STM32 is plenty precise enough to read that, but that's assuming perfect resistors for this voltage divider. If these resistors are plus or minus 10% or plus or minus 5%, it starts to get really messy really quickly. So I don't think this will be a good long-term solution, but I just need something right now to have them identify themselves so that I can isolate individual feeders when I'm talking to them. I've had a lot of back and forth about how I want to do this identification. I was thinking about putting a little I2C EEPROM on this so the feeder could just query it as soon as it gets plugged in and ask, hey, what slot am I in? But now I'm kind of leaning towards just letting you set that manually with the feeder itself. So there'll be five LEDs on the back of the feeder that would represent the five bits of the address. And then you can just set it manually with a couple little clicky buttons. Much easier that way, I think. If you have some ideas on how you think it would make sense to give a feeder an ID so it knows when to listen over RS45, let me know in the comments. But anyway, this is what we got for now. So I'm gonna throw on a bunch of resistors on this that all set a different analog voltage, and then we'll put it on the machine. <laughs> Okay, 
Okay, so before we get into all the fancy addressing stuff, first we need to just get RS-45 working. I've added some hardware to the motherboard that will take in a UART port, so just a standard serial ones and zeros spitting out data, and it will convert it into RS-45. RS-45 is just an electrical standard. There's no protocol of first you send this byte, and then I send this byte, none of that. It's just what is the electricity doing? There are two wires for RS-45, and when you want to send a one, they'll whoop, diverge and go opposite each other. One will go down, the other one will go up. And then when you want to send a zero, whoop, they come back to the same voltage. Sending data this way is really helpful for canceling out noise, especially if you send it over a twisted pair. Electrically, any noise will kind of cancel itself out if it's affecting both of those wires kind of tangled up together. But it makes sure that you're gonna send the data and it's gonna be really darn reliable over long distances or in really noisy environments. So I just threw some dummy firmware on this that's just gonna barf out a couple bytes. And if we hook it up to the oscilloscope, it looks like this. And you can see those pop up and even my oscilloscope can like tell you what the bytes are. It's pretty cool. If we instead hook it up to RS-45 and send the same bytes, then they look like that. So now we have the two channels and then they go opposite each other. Pretty snazzy. Very good, very good. Okay, now we just need to make the feeder listen to that and go, oh, you want me to move some tape, huh? I got you. That's next. That's what we got. So let's see if I can get that to work. <laughs> Oh, oh my god. Wait, okay, okay, okay. Oh my god. That was so cool. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so the feeder ID totally works. The feeder knows exactly what slot it's in based on the voltage divider, and it can use that information to know which commands over RS-45 it should listen to. Oh. So right now I only have two feeder floors set up on the bus down here. There's a difference of about 0.1 volts, which would break up the 3.3 volts that I have of range on my ADC on the feeder chip to be about 32 different divisions. And right now I just have the feeder spitting out a, a single byte over serial of what ID it thinks it has. If I put it on the first feeder floor, it sees that it's effectively zero volts, and it spits out 49 in decimal, which is one in ASCII. But then, if I move it over to the second slot, it sees just a bit higher of a voltage, and it gives itself 50, which is decimal for ASCII 2. Then, Ooh. I can use my dummy firmware on the motherboard. I can just send it serial and it'll just barf it right back out over RS-45. I program the feeders to listen for one byte, which is its address, and then a second byte, which is either a capital B or a capital F for backwards or forwards. So I should be able to send the feeder in this slot, the second slot, to F, and it'll move forward, or to B, and it'll move back. To forward, and there it goes! <laughs> to backward, Bob's your uncle. That is just so magical, dude. Here, let's try it at slot one. One F moves forward, and if I try two, it doesn't do anything. There's no feeder in that second slot, so nothing's gonna respond to it. <laughs> this is so cool. It works. All mounted up on the machine, motherboard's on there, talking to it over RS-45. It looks at the different positions. It's reading the commands only meant for that one specific feeder. It's cool. It's really cool. <laughs> I'm surprised with how well the whole analog pin detecting the voltage divider worked. When I first did the voltage divider design, I thought it was gonna work really well, but a bunch of folks in the Discord told me it probably wouldn't be that great, and it would vary too much, and wasn't a good solution. They're probably right, and there are probably better ways to do it for sure. At least within this one system that I've made, the variation on the ADC is like one or two ticks out of 
4096. Of course, if you use different resistors, those values change a lot. So I'm sure if you were to make a lot more of these, even with the same value resistor, the deviation would be enough that it probably wouldn't be super reliable. I think just doing it manually on the feeder is going to be the best. It takes two seconds to just pop a button a few times, get the address right, so it shouldn't be a big deal. Plus, more LEDs is always a good thing. <laughs> it is really cool. It's cool to just put it on the slot and the feeder's like, oh yeah, I know what's up, I know where I am. I know which commands to listen to. <laughs> it's so dope, it's so dope. And of course, I still need to get all of this integrated into Marlin. The motherboard's just running dummy firmware that's pretty much parroting out whatever I send to it over the USB serial port and spitting it out over the RS-45 serial port. So I need to get this all set up into normal Marlin so it can move motors and stuff at the same time. And I also need to make a good standard protocol. RS-45 is just electrically what happens, but the whole back and forth of what byte for an address or command and all that kind of stuff still needs to be figured out. I just made a goofy little one, 1F, 1B for forward and backward for now, but I need to make something more robust for all the different things that the feeder may want to communicate, all the different things the motherboard might want to tell the feeder to do, all that stuff. Alrighty, that's it for this one. I have a Patreon, so if you'd like to help support me in projects like this, there's a link in the description where you can become a patron. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. But before I go, I want to thank this video sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay provided the circuit boards for this project, and just look at those little nuggets of circuitry goodness. Per use, they came out absolutely wonderful. These boards are likely to see quite a bit of abuse. The feeders are going to be sliding onto them and off of them quite a bit. So far, they've performed admirably. If you're looking to buy some PCBs, I highly recommend you check out PCBWay. If you like some of the boards I've made for this project, there's a link in the description where you can buy them directly from PCBWay. I have been nothing but impressed and stoked about the quality of the boards. They usually come insanely quickly. They have incredibly good prices and their matte black is wonderful. Thank you so much to PCBUA for sponsoring this video. Go forward. Thank you. Go backward. Thank you. Don't mind if I do.